Hello dear students, welcome to Axiomatic Course. This video is the part of the solution series for CSIR net December 2019 and we are doing this problem 69 of your paper. It's a problem of analysis and it's a MSQ type problem. So let us have a look. Let U subset of Rn be an open subset of Rn and f is a function from u to rn which is a c infinity function. What is the meaning of c infinity? It means that it's infinitely many times differentiable function. Suppose that for every x belongs to u, the derivative at x dfx is non-singular. So they are calling dfx is non-singular. Then which of the following statement is true? So we have this v subset of u is open, then fv is open and something like this. All right. So what I want you to understand initially, I want you to understand uh, inverse mapping theorem. All right. So this question is totally dependent upon the inverse mapping theorem, its application. All right. So if you understand inverse mapping theorem, then easily you can feel that this question is based on the inverse mapping theorem. All right. So what I will tell you, I will firstly introduce inverse mapping theorem for you and then we will proceed. All right, so this is what we call inverse mapping theorem. All right, I have written inverse mapping theorem for you. All right, although we don't need it now. So what we will do, we will firstly try to discard the options which are incorrect. All right, for discarding the options which are incorrect, we don't need any theorem. It's just basic analysis, nothing else. All right, so to solve this problem in exam, it will take less than one minute. All right. If you discard options, but in order to prove the correct one, it will take time. All right. That is why I have written inverse mapping theorem here, but I don't want you to waste time in exam. That is why I will discard wrong option first. So see your second option says, it says that F such that U to F U is a homomorphism, homeomorphism. What is the meaning of homeomorphism? That F should be uh, a bijective map or a bijective continuous map and its inverse should also be bijective continuous map. Are you getting my point? So when you talk about homeomorphism, you always talk about continuous bijection, all right, continuous bijective map F and inverse is also continuous bijective. This is what is called homeomorphism. So we will define it properly now. A function f from set A to set B is called homeomorphism if f is bijective, it is continuous and its inverse is continuous also. All right. So also inverse should be bijective, but it is obvious that if f is bijective, its inverse will also be bijective. So we don't count that. So it means that if it is a homeomorphism, it has to be bijective. Now I will shrink your problem to just real line. So I will choose my n to be one. It's not mentioned that you cannot choose your n. All right. Now, if I mention your n is equal to one, then what will happen? Your function will be from u to r. What is u? u is some open subset of r. All right. It was given to you. I will choose my u to be uh, minus one zero union zero one. Now see what will happen. Your function is from minus one zero union zero one to R and FX is given by X square. I'm taking this map. See this thing that if you will differentiate it, you will get two X and this two X is non zero for all X uh, belonging to domain. Your domain is minus one zero. It can be zero if zero is inside the domain, but it is not. That means for every X, dfx is non-zero. So this is the meaning of non-singular. The meaning, all right, this meaning uh, is different if n is higher, all right? We need Jacobian thing in that. But I will not introduce that in this part of the video. If you don't understand the meaning of dfx for n greater than one, then you have to Google it and then you will easily understand everything about it, all right? I am talking about the one dimension case. That means dfx is nothing else. It's the differentiation. All right. The differentiation that we are doing since class 11th or 12th. So dfx is non-zero. That means it is non-singular. So we have satisfied every property. We have taken u a open set. 
we have taken uh, a function which is uh, which is uh, which is a c infinity function it is c infinity all right it's infinitely many times differentiable we don't have uh, to worry about differentiation in this so dfx is also non zero so everything is satisfied so do you think that it's a homomorphism no it's not a homeomorphism why it's not a homeomorphism not one one all right you see what will be the image of this set all right the open set that we have image will be image of f will be 0 1 only so all the negative numbers in this open set all right will map to the 0 1 also are you getting my point so think of it let us take minus 1 by 2 from here minus 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 will map to the same element so because image of f is 0 1 that means the whole set this whole set will be mapped to 0 1 and this one will also be mapped to 0 1 so that creates a problem in the injectivity so this function that I have chosen is not 1 1 even it, if it is satisfies all the properties given in the problem. So it means that your second option is incorrect. It cannot be a homeomorphism unless it is bijective. So third, third is the same one because you already proved that is not 1 1. So third is also incorrect. Now let us talk about the fourth option. All right. It says if V is subset of U is closed, then F V is closed. All right. Now what we know, we know that space in itself is, is a closed set. All right. Space in itself is a closed set. This set that you are taking as a domain, this is your space for a now. All right. This is your space. It is closed. We know that space is always closed. All right. Also it is open. This space is always open as well as closed. So now see, this space is closed. What is its image? Image means f of minus one zero union zero one. What is its image? Image is uh, zero one. Now, do you think zero one is closed inside this codomain? No, it's not because it's an open interval. How it can be closed? So fourth is incorrect. So if you choose your n to be 1, the whole problem becomes an easy problem. All right. So finally, we proved that fourth is incorrect, third is incorrect, second is incorrect. That means one has to be your correct option. Now, let me erase this in order to prove your first option. For the knowledge purpose, we are doing this. All right. Otherwise, we are finished with the problem. So see what we have, all right, in the A option. It says, if you choose an open set from U, then FV is open in Rn, all right? So this is what your theorem, your statement is telling us. We will, we will explain inverse mapping theorem later. Let me write. So what we have to show, we have to show, all right, if V is subset of U open, then this will imply fv is open all right of course in the codomain now let us try to understand inverse mapping theorem because in order to prove this we need inverse mapping theorem it says let u is a subset of rn is an open set and f is a function from u to rn which is a c1 map all right it should be c1 one time differentiable map it should be and you are considering a point x naught belongs to u such that d f x naught all right this thing is non singular if it happens then what will happen is this that there exists an open set v subset of u such that f v is open now try to focus on this thing that statement is saying there exists an open set but your problem is saying if you will choose any open set, then F V will open. This inverse mapping theorem is not telling you this, that every open set, image of every open set is open. It is telling you that there will exist an open set consisting of X naught such that F V is open. So what we have to do, we have to use little bit of tricks over here. What I will do, all right, we have to show this. So proof I am writing over here. So now what I am doing, I am restricting my function on V. All right. 
this function f from v to u uh, from v to rn that i am defining currently is actually this function is f is f restricted to v what is the meaning of restricted see you have a bigger domain let us say this is your u what we are doing we are considering any open set over here this is your open set let us say this is your v so we are talking about image of function on this set only this is the meaning of restriction i hope you already know the meaning of restriction all right so i am defining this function f all right which is a restricted map let us say call this f bar all right what is this f bar function it's a restricted map now see this restricted map is actually differentiable it is c1 map why because it's it's a restriction of uh, you are what you are doing you are changing its domain only nothing else you are doing because you are changing its domain so function will remain unchanged so all the property that are with the function itself will be with the f bar this will imply f bar is c infinity f bar is c infinity and for all x dfx is non singular everything will work all right so f bar so we are talking about this function f bar now now this f bar function is from an open set to rn all right this open set is of course a subset of rn so everything which i have written over here is all will also work for f bar all right so f bar satisfies all the hypothesis of the inverse mapping theorem this will imply all right all right so this will imply for all x inside your v all right there exist v1 consisting of x consisting x what is the meaning of consisting x that means x belongs to v1 such that f of v1 is open are you getting my point now let us erase this part so see this will happen if we will apply inverse mapping theorem on this function f bar then what will happen is this that for all x not belong to v there exist v1 such that x not belonging to v1 all right v1 subset of v such that f of v1 all right it's not v actually let me erase this part uh, sorry so it is just v1 so v1 is open you know that it happens for every x all right why i am writing for all in this case in the in the statement it was not written but in the question it was given that every x inside u has this property therefore it will happen for every x all right so for every x not belonging to v f v1 is open uh, f v1 is open this is what we are getting from the inverse mapping theorem so see now what is happening we know that we can write your space v as union of v1 because what is happening is this let us say this is your space v all right you are saying that for every x not in v there will exist an open set which consists of x not such that its image is open now see this thing this part over here is this that you have this let us say you have x not over here and this is your v1 all right so uh, this x not is surrounded by v1 and this v1 is inside this we know that image of v1 is open now it is happening for every v1 over there all right x not are present everywhere in your uh, in your space i am not saying that these x not these two x not are same but it happens for every x not all right so every element inside this will have this property that is why we can write them as the union of all v1s where v1 will be generated from this inverse mapping theorem all right now you know that you can write them like this all right now you know that these sets are open and you know that arbitrary union of open set is open we know that this is open and we know arbitrary union of open set is open that is why this thing is open all right 
so you got my point or not so something like this will happen i am giving you a hint of the proof i am not writing any formal statements so all right but this proof is totally dependent upon the inverse mapping theorem if you understand this inverse mapping theorem properly you can always create such kind of tricks for you in order to prove this all right so thank you if you have any doubt in this problem you can always ask in the comment section if you have any other doubt you can join our whatsapp and telegram groups links are given in the description part of the video